Thank you for flying with us. So many breakfast choices. Only one real option. <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> I'm gonna have what I always have. Ice mocha. Hey, I'm gonna go see if the plane's here. Let's the camera. I'll be back. Wait in line. Hold our spot. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the VMP Performance Channel. Chris and I are headed to the Texas Mile in Victoria, Texas, just outside of Houston, to hang out with Jordan Weir and his crew, London Chassis Dino, Cy Lee Tuning, and Billet Pro Shop. It's gonna be a great time. We appear to literally be the last ones in line to board. <laughs> there is a number higher than us. <laughs> These um, promotional posters on the uh, wall of the jetway, they just really exemplify the, uh, the sheer joy I experience flying southwest. You guys have fun. Thank, Thank you. you. You have never boarded a plane and been able to see for the other side. Oh, that is interesting. It makes you appreciate how small it is. Welcome to Houston. Reserve the kitchen. Safety, safety. Those around you remain seated. Seat belts fastening. Carry on. Stow where they are. Did we do a rabbit the gate? The captain has turned off the fastened seat belt sign. Take care now. Thanks, you too. Alright, let's do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, we just arrived at uh, Houston and we got a charger to drive because our condo box was not available. I'm looking forward to this, Chris. Me too. I was thinking about getting a Challenger for the shop anyway, so we'll try this out before, uh, before we try before you buy. Burn out before you buy. <laughs> we won't get pulled over by the Popo. It looks like we work for the Popo. Yeah. Did she say Challenger or Charger? I don't remember. Let's see. She said it had a Hemi. It had a Hemi. It says Hemi on the side. Uh, Charger RT. Silver Charger RT rear wheel drive. It's silver, so it's a Charger, not a Challenger. That's the four-door version, right? Charger. Charger. All right. You, when you get into big, ambiguous Dodge cars, you have to figure out which one you're actually driving. <laughs> when in Texas, go to Bucky's. They have kolaches. Spent $50 at Bucky's. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll last through the weekend. Yeah. Uh, behold the chipmunk statue. Every rental car gets a sticker. 
So how was that kolache, Chris? That was pretty delicious. We're all hopped up on Bartle Skeet and Diet Coke, and we're almost to the mile. And about 15 minutes to go. And they are already running their cars there. I am excited to see what this is all about. Yeah, I heard there's going to be three GT500s prepped by We're Racing in London Chassis Dino. And they're also going to throw in uh, a 15 up uh, Mustang S550, a GTR, and a Hellcat. And I hear the GTR does over 200, so I'm excited to see how it does against the GT500s. And two of those GT500s have uh, the BMP Gen 3 on them. Yeah. I think it's going to be a good weekend. That's what I figured. This is the calm before the crazy. Good morning everyone. It's day two at the Texas Mile. We just got here. They're already running cars. We, uh, we had a pretty good uh, day yesterday. Got a lot of bugs worked out. Jordan and Matt and Cy did some tune updates. Got some idlers and pulleys swapped. I think uh, today is going to be a pretty good day. The air is still pretty uh, Pretty decent right now, as decent as it can be when the when the sun is as bright as uh, you can tell it is from the video. We're not gonna have super great weather at the Texas Mile this year, but it's still gonna work out all right. And based on the way these flags are blowing, we've actually got a little bit of a tailwind right now. We're gonna go check in with Jordan Weir 
and see how things are going. You know what this reminds me of? Knight Rider? Yes! <laughs> that was my favorite show growing up. And when they when they discontinued it at like six years old, like I actually went to my mom and I think I was like really, really sad. I may have <laughs> cried. And well, Kip was an iconic car. Yes, yes, I'm glad I'm glad as young as you are, you know that. How do you not know that? You were raised right. <laughs> Jordan. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. How was your evening? It was good. We're ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll? Oh yeah. That's what I want to hear. We got uh, got the 2.5 pulley on there and got the Billet Pro Shop auxiliary idler on there with the J2 mod. So we got the one inch lines going into the intercooler there. And hopefully resolve our belt slip issue from yesterday. And I think we're ready to make it pass. The the, uh, the morning is still uh, still fresh, <laughs> as we can say it. I can it's feel starting kind to get of a, hot, but kind of a cool breeze still a little bit. Maybe that's the sweat evaporating on my skin. I don't know. We'll be good. Yeah, we'll be good. Okay. We're ready to send it. And I saw the bigger pump in the back already. Yep. Awesome. We're flowing about three times as much now. Awesome. Fucking shit. That's what we want to hear. We should be good for a full pass. We'll see how it goes. Good morning, man. Hey, good morning. How you doing, Justin? Good. How you doing? Good, good, good. How are you? Good. So, uh, put a little tune-up in this car here. It's a uh, Whipple car, and uh, um, we're here at the uh, Texas Mile today. And, uh, we went 182 with a base tune in it. We were having some problems yesterday with the spark plug. Was blowing out the spark. I saw you changing out spark plugs on it. Yeah. And I heard there were some other little things that you found because this is this is a new car to you, right? It's a brand new car to us. Yeah, uh, it was with a previous tuner before, and uh, it's from Colorado. We saw him at the Colorado Mile, and uh, you know, we, uh, we started sorting out some of his fueling issues. There were some fuel pumps that were uh, not hooked up. Uh, so now we're good. <laughs> you would you not believe how many times, like you know, as a tuner myself. All the fuel pumps working, you know? Uh, no, they're not. We gotta fix that shit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's, yeah. right. It's, it's the silly stuff that gets you, and then, you know, every, when everything's right, everything works. Correct. Right. And records are broken. Cool pro shop, right. I guess. So we're hoping for uh, 190s or so this time. It's only 13 degrees of timing the last one, so it's very soft. Out of a stock having... motor S550, right? Yep. You want to see 190 yep. with a Whipple C9. That's awesome. I think it'll do it. Yeah. Jordan just ran his fastest time yet, 226 in the mile. They actually stopped at the uh, end of the track to read plugs, so he hasn't seen the time slip yet. I'm gonna go over here to the uh, to the time slip trailer, I guess we're gonna call it, and catch him as he's getting the slip.
<laughs> that's all right. I believe that's quarter mile and a half an hour. Hell yeah. She's sitting low. <laughs> yeah, real low. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You pulled the chute. How's the water? It's good. It's uh, it's cool. 50 degrees maybe. That's not bad. So, and it was running while I drove back from the end there too. So now the temp should be good. Yeah. Now you get to pack parachute. I don't know if that. We don't have to work too hard. <laughs> we get to go out to dinner early. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. It's kind of a surreal scene out here on grid at the Texas Mile. It's day three, it's Sunday. This is the last day for everyone to try and run their best times. The fog is super heavy. It's like 9.30 and we can, can't even really see the sun. Uh, this fog is gonna have to clear before anybody can run, but this is the time to run the best possible times. It's cool. There's no headwind. There's not a tailwind either, unfortunately. I'm gonna go walk through the uh, grid and see what's going on, what everybody's hoping to do, if they made any changes to their cars last night. Hey, good morning, guys. How's it going? Good. Good. Oh, yeah. Good. I'm Justin. Sorry, Jana. 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 Eddie Pro. Eddie, nice to meet you, Eddie. I saw you racing yesterday. Good. Good. This is a very, very sweet GT500. I was admiring your wheels yesterday. Yep, they're uh, forge line and uh, very light. Uh, they're just not flashy. They're uh, like seven pounds lighter than the average. And you do that times four, and it's the rotating mass outside. Yeah, it's nothing. Makes sense. Yeah, it helps. And I, I was telling everybody that my first Mustang was Bright Atlantic Blue, and that, that powder coat that you put on them reminds me yep. of that. So tell us a little bit about what's done to your car. 2013, uh, I've been chasing that 200 mark for since the day I bought it. Did 168 bone stock, put right off the showroom floor, the first time I ran it. Uh, stock block last year in March, or this year in March, we did 200.1. Wow. With just uh, some tuning and a stock block. Wow. So beat that. Uh, you know, and this is like baseball, there's a lot of statistics. So, fastest 1314 Mustang with a stock block. Okay, <laughs> that was you, I heard that, about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so that, that was this one. Turned around, and that same weekend we ran 199, 198, 200, 200.1, so 40 was a good job going. Yeah. So that was all with stock rod, stock everything. I had one of these cars um, back in, uh, I sold it about three years ago, I traded it on a GT350, but yeah. it was a, it was amazing. In 2013, Ford put so much more engineering and performance and everything into the GT500 right yeah. out of the factory. Right after March, we took it to, uh, back to Kentucky. To, uh, the London chassis dyno. London chassis Yeah, I dyno. see Chad's got his sticker right yeah. there on your windshield. Yeah. And that guy worked a miracle. Yeah. He, Change the supercharger to 3.4. Okay. So we're going to try to do better than two. Okay. So you've got. Small supercharger. So you've got your benchmark pretty much, and then you want to go over 220. Yeah. Uh, he was telling me over there that you want to be uh, you want to be faster than Jordan. That's it. He yeah. Did 226. So I got to do 227. He kind of set the benchmark yesterday, yeah. and yeah. and they've got the tune figured out on those one because Good. I had a little problem in the last run. Yesterday I missed fourth gear and still did 216. So it's that's strong. They got that's, it figured out. <laughs> that's strong. Yeah. So you 216 missing a gear. Yeah. You're just gonna lay that power. I'm gonna just. I'm a, 
just going to make those shifts count. Yeah. Try yeah. to get this thing up where it, it can do what it's going to do. Lay that power down. I'm looking at those big meaty yeah. R6s or R7s? 7s, I believe. R7 Hoosiers, but yeah. That was another change. We put a taller taller okay. tire on the back. And, uh, it's amazing the gearing and the you know and the tire yeah. size and everything everybody does because you want to go through and forth. Yeah. This thing is built for the mile, but it did one one thirty six or something in the quarter, and one eighty six and a half. And then it, at the top end it laid down a little bit, but they got that figured out. So now it ought to pull all the way through. Good. That but is strong. This thing is one thirty six and a quarter is pretty quick for something that tall gears and yeah. tall tires. Yeah, I mean, the way these cars take off, it's just, yeah. I love it's an off idle start, basically. Yeah. Let me, this, uh, the roll bar in this thing, when we went through tech, the, uh, and this was built by Chad up in Kentucky, and they took this roll bar, they called the other tech guys over and said, look this over, because this is, this is perfection. Uh, because the, the rules just change. Uh huh. And what they said with this one is kind of a benchmark. Cool. And it's it's mine, and then the white one up there, my buddy Dan. So they're very happy with the way Chad built the roll bar. I mean, I can see the gussets. Yeah. And you know what's interesting, a lot of people don't do is those bars in the back. Yeah. That tie in the the harness bar. Anytime you add diagonals, you get a lot of strength. Yeah. And. You see how it goes up in front, in through the dash. A lot of people bring them down in front. Oh, of the yeah. Dash. That's I a mean, big deal because that. I mean, that's, you know, that's much more, that much farther forward that yeah. you have a cage structure around yeah. you. <laughs> and it goes across, side, bar to bar up under the Yeah. Dash. Yeah, I like some of the stuff Chad does where yeah. he, you know, recesses the door panel a little bit. Yeah. So you can still, you know, use the car, not be crammed in there. Yeah. But then you've still got the appearance of a uh, of a factory door panel just with a little recess right there. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is super sweet. The other thing we did to this thing for this race, it's a fully built in best, oh. best engine <laughs> from uh, BES built. Yeah. And it's a five eight then. Yeah, and it's all the way from the ground up. Awesome. Ever I mean it's a list of <laughs> little everything they did to it. So not gonna hurt it. No, I've been pushing no. it at 7,500 RPMs on shifts. Rock solid. 7,500 RPM. Wow. Redlined it a few times. <laughs> we got the ice tanks the loaded. Big tank. Yeah. Yeah. And he brought it up. I used to have it down in the hole. He brought it up so you can get to Man, it. Man, I'm like 35 and we're too old for that shit. I know it, you know, I know. to be bending over in trunks and crap. I was putting my shoes on this <laughs> one and I was thinking, man, this is getting hard and hard. <laughs> <laughs> Crawling over these roll bars. Yeah. No, but the important thing is that you're out here doing it, man. Yeah, having a ball. You want to pop the hood for us? Yeah. I can. Well, it was a new one. He put that hood, hood on there the last uh, on this last bit that is beautiful yeah and it's still running the three and a half foot so we could shrink it down and build a little more horse but we're just trying to get that program worked out and do it with this no you know before it's, we tweak it some yeah i mean it's definitely if you know the power's there, you don't always need to go to the smallest the, pulley. We'll be watching you out there make your runs uh, yeah. this morning. I know. I'll try to do my part. <laughs> I think they did their part now, so now I got to yeah. do them shifts. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. I'm excited to see it run. Yeah. Good luck. Appreciate it. Good morning, man. How are you doing? How's it going? Good. Good. We just wanted to uh, chat about your car if you got a minute. Sure. Sure. So. I heard you ran a uh, good number yesterday. Yeah, 195.2. That is freaking awesome. Yeah. So, uh, tell us a little bit about it. So it's a 2015 Mustang GT. Uh, you got the 2.9 liter Whipple uh, supercharger. Got some uh, RGR racing heads on there, headers, um, cat back exhaust, and then uh, uh, we did a E85 fuel system with a four innovations L4 system, triple pump, and then. Uh, 
outside of that, it's uh, oh ID, ID uh, 1300X uh, injectors on. Cool. Um, you want to pop the hood for us? Sure, of course. to it got the 195 number we're hoping this morning we're hoping to catch early it was cooler out maybe get uh, 200 out of it we'll have to see we'll have to see what the what the track will do but it's feeling a little hot and sticky this morning yeah so. i mean that it took so long for that fog to burn off yep. Yep. that the especially the first people to run are going to be lucky to have a dry track yep, yep. by the time they get to you though yeah hopefully be dried off good yep and like we were talking about uh, yesterday, stock block car, uh, bottom end is completely stock on this car. So stock, wow, stock bottom end. So you said it has ported heads. Yep. But, so, so you, how, how did you end up going to a ported head, but not build the whole engine? Um, we were out here last year and uh, thought I was experiencing a little bit of valve float. Um, I think it was more of a spark plug issue than anything else, but uh, okay. just bit the bullet, wanted it to flow a little bit better, and went with a, with uh. a little different. They're, they're still Coyote heads on here, it's just they've been ported. Ported, right, right. And I mean, the, the S550, the, the Gen 2 Coyote, as everybody calls it, yeah. the bottom end's known for being strong. Yep. So yep. It, We're running about 12 PSI on it right now. It's, it's, uh, it's a gamer. I've, I've got uh, north of 75 passes on the car. Oh wow! In the mile, so uh, uh, it just keeps flowing and going. That's great to hear. Yeah. Well, good luck, man. Yeah, we'll thank be you. watching your runs. Yes, definitely.
one. Backed up his numbers. <laughs> oh, but this shit's man. We're gonna get out of here, man. Alright. Appreciate yeah, hanging out with you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. So, you for the help? Yeah. Right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and Will, are you coming to DRI? Look at it. Yeah, we should be there. Okay. Cool. The dog will be there. Found out the good old charger knocks like a mofo, so we're gonna put the the ready to party fuel in it. 93. Well, we got our stash from Bucky's stuff to take home with us. We kind of saw some gifts for Donnie, some gifts for my kids. Traction control sets no. Traction control. All right. The uh, charger tests out all right. <laughs> So, what'd you think? That is an exciting event. I mean, cars going to over 200 miles an hour, that's insane. This is your first time in Texas Mile. Yeah. It's my uh, first time in like five or six years. I took my car out here, but that was a long time ago at this point. The cars are going a lot faster now. That's kind of what I learned from being out here today with George and his team. How fast were you running when you brought your car? I was running 180. That's still pretty fast. Also. Yeah, it was fast, and you know, I wanted to be knocking on the 200 mile per hour door, but I didn't have the, the level of prep and everything that it took to get to that point. And watching these people run over the weekend, 200 is a big deal. And if you surpass 200, get into the 220s, that's insane. Yeah. So, a lot of power, a lot of prep, a lot of things working right coming together. And then we saw Jordan Weir run a 226. Yeah. But the the road to 226 is what was impressive. 150 in the quarter. I know a lot of people at drag race that would love to have a 150 mile per hour quarter mile trap speed. And I mean that trap speed was from a rolling start on a no prep surface, pretty much. Yeah. I mean no. Yeah. It's not not like drag racing where you can hook up and go. In the Texas Mile, you just have to roll out real smooth and just apply the power. Yeah. And then he went 190 and a half mile, which a lot of people that follow us is, are familiar with some of the half mile times that Rebecca and everybody else had ran. And Rebecca's gone like 181, 182. And he's going 190. Thank you. And, uh, and then... Anybody that saw the live feed saw like the deep breath and the silence because once we saw that 190 half mile number, we knew that it was on a pass. Yeah. And 226 popped up on the screen. It was awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. It was like the whole crowd went silent for about yeah. 10 seconds. And, and I'm pretty sure that uh, that is a record for a small blower. But 226 is all in the freaking mail for just a 2.65 liter BMP Gen 3 TVS supercharger. I think it was a pretty awesome weekend overall. I think so too. Jordan and his team set some new records. They got to see BMP Gen 3 perform. And uh, everybody made it home safely. No blown motors or anything like that. Yeah. We're, we're about to hop on this plane and hopefully make it home safely as well. <laughs> 
so. overall a great weekend. Yeah, I think we might have to check it out again next year. That would be awesome. See how much further the Gen 3 can go. Yeah, so if you, uh, if you like our video, subscribe, share it with your friends, like it, post some comments, ask some questions. We'll get uh, the team from We're Racing and London Chassis Dino and everybody on YouTube commenting. Mm -hmm. And uh, until next time, 